The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Elena Russ. And we begin with your crime watch this morning. A suspect in custody after reportedly returning to the scene of an attempted robbery and shooting at a KCSO deputy. KCSO said in a tweet they were responding to an armed robbery call around 3 a.m. Saturday in Lamont when the suspect came back to the scene while deputies were speaking to the victim. KCSO says the suspect shot at them twice, then tried to get into a vehicle. The person was arrested and is facing charges of attempted murder, robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, resisting arrest and related charges. Also in your crime watch, a joint task force arrested an inmate on the run last night, just a day after he walked away from a reentry facility. 28 year old Andres Carrera is serving a two year sentence for buying stolen goods and illegally possessing ammunition. Law enforcement says he was enrolled in a California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation reentry program when he ditched his ankle monitor and walked away from the facility. Carrera was found through a multi-agency investigation that included the U.S. Marshals, CDCR, and the Arvin PD. Arvin confirmed that Carrera was arrested at a hotel in Bakersfield without incident and is now back in CDCR custody. He may face charges from the Kern County District Attorney's Office after this incident. A Bakersfield man with gang ties has been sentenced to more than seven years in prison for possession of meth. Luis Torres was arrested in July of 2021 after a short foot chase. Police say he had meth and heroin that he intended to distribute. According to court documents, Torres is a member of the Loma Bakers gang and has more than 20 criminal convictions. Well, we continue to remember a former Bakersfield police officer serving as a deputy in Colorado, killed in the line of duty Sunday night. Law enforcement paid their respects to Kern County native Andrew Peary. Nicole Fierro with our sister station in Denver reports. In the security wide field community where crime tape surrounds investigators collecting bags of evidence. I felt really sorry for him though. Neighbor Terry Hampton processes the line of duty death he witnessed Sunday evening. El Paso County Sheriff's Deputy Andrew Peary killed, responding to a call of a shooting right across the street at this home. They stopped the cars real fast. They got out and started running up to the house and that was the end in for the police officer. 20 minutes away, outside of the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, fellow men and women in blue leave flowers, pray, pay their respects to Deputy Andrew Peary. Before joining the Sheriff's Office in 2016, he served as an officer in Bakersfield, California. The husband and father to two, also a veteran who served in the United States Army. A fellow serviceman sharing these photos with us from their time serving together in Italy and Iraq. He says Deputy Peary was a decorated airborne infantryman, a paratrooper, an exemplary soldier, and a hero. Uh, he was a brave man. He did didn't uh, back off from anything going down there. Nicole Fierro reporting. In your 17 court watch now, a Bakersfield family is suing Pacific Gas and Electric, blaming the utility for the 2015 gas pipeline explosion at Weibel and Houghton Roads. The November 13th explosion sent flames soaring above power lines, killing bulldozer operator Joseph Michael Ojeda causing second and three degree, third degree burns to Gloria Ruckman and her mother. Ruckman spent months in a burn center and underwent several surgical procedures to replace her charred skin. She and her family are now suing PG&E, big and deep agricultural development, and agwise over the blast, which also destroyed the family's home. Attorney Daniel Rodriguez says the utility was cutting corners when the explosion happened, claiming PG&E failed to mark exactly where the pipeline was before digging started. Evidence will show that this explosion took 100% avoidable, 100% preventable. PG&E says the lines were properly marked and Big and Deep operated on an expired dig ticket. In a previous lawsuit, a Kern County jury sided with PG&E, finding it did not defame Big and Deep in statements made about the explosion. 
Now to education news, as a few more kids will be headed back to school this year and compared to years past, thanks to an expanding program for the youngest students known as Transitional Kindergartners, 17's Chris Burton explains. Every year, more and more kids become eligible for transitional kindergarten in California, which means more parents can breathe a little easier, but schools and districts have to account for hundreds of new students. This year, any child who will turn five between September 2nd and February 2nd of next year is eligible for transitional kindergarten, or TK. It's part of a plan outlined in last year's state budget to eventually offer the program to every four-year-old in California. But as the window widens, TK enrollment goes up. Also. Rosedale Union School District Superintendent Sue Lemon says the challenge now is finding teachers and sites for those extra kids. I'm glad that the state is letting us, you know, fold that in uh, a little bit slower so that we can make sure that we have the facilities and the staff to be able to do it. All right. So you Lemon says Rosedale's TK enrollment has nearly doubled compared to last year. All districts that offer kindergarten are required to also offer a TK program to eligible students. To learn more about TK programming, including a timeline of age requirement expansion, visit cde.ca.gov. Chris Burton, 17 News. Well, the FBI searching the Florida home of former President Donald Trump on Monday. The search happening without Trump present, and it appears to be related to White House documents. NBC's Susan McGinnis reports. The FBI on Monday executing a search warrant on Mar-a-Lago, the Florida home of former President Trump. This could only happen if a judge found probable cause to believe that evidence of a crime will be found there. Mr. Trump, can we get your reaction to the raid, sir? Trump not in Florida during the search, ignoring questions as he left Trump Tower in New York. In a statement, he says his home was under siege, raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, and said they even broke into my safe. A source familiar with the matter telling NBC News the search was tied to classified information Trump allegedly took to Mar-a-Lago from the White House when he left office. The national security concerns clearly enter in, as do questions about his motive in retaining secret and top secret documents. In February, the National Archives retrieved 15 boxes of White House records Trump removed. It asked the Justice Department to examine whether his handling of White House records violated federal law. There's no family in American history that has taken more arrows in the back than the Trump family. Trump supporters in Congress lining up to defend him. What was on the warrant? What were you really doing? What were you looking for? Why not talk to President Trump and have him give the information you're after? In Florida, protesters gathered, reaction strong on both sides. It's very disturbing. The man did nothing while he was in office, and I think they're just on, they're on a witch hunt again. He's going to go down for this, and it's going to be a great day, man. Trump calling the action politically motivated, saying radical left Democrats desperately don't want me to run for president. As for Trump's political aspirations now, one person close to the former president saying if he wasn't running before, he is now. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. Meanwhile, House Minority Leader and Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy having strong words following this raid, saying in part, quote, I've seen enough. The Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politicization. Politicization? All right. So McCarthy ended his statement with a promise to conduct immediate oversight of the Department of Justice and Attorney General Merrick Garland if Republicans take control of the House in November. Kevin McCarthy also speaking out against the Inflation Reduction Act. In a statement released Sunday night, he said, quote, Congress should be focusing on our country's call to answer to the rising prices of gas, groceries, and just about everything else we buy. Instead, Senate Democrats and Vice President Harris voted on a 700-page, half a trillion dollar spending spree that would raise taxes during a recession, punish small businesses, hire 87,000 IRS bureaucrats to harass the middle class and increase inflation. When this bill comes to the House, I urge everyone to vote no. Now to your 17 Crime Watch. And an investigation's underway after two goats were stolen from Highland High School. The student-raised goats are part of the school's Future Farmers of America program, and they were set to be shown at the Kern County Fair. School staff tell 17 News two men were seen breaking into the school's farm around 1.40 yesterday morning. The men were reportedly driving a tan or silver SUV when they jumped out, grabbed the goats, and threw them in the back of the vehicle. 
The whole thing happened in just less than two minutes. The school's now working tirelessly to find the animals, saying the girls who raised them invested thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours caring for the goats. They spend a lot of time with these animals, they're connected with them, they have a, a bond with them, and they just want to make sure that the animals are okay and that they could see their project through to the end. If you know anything about this case, you're asked to call KHSD Police. That number is on your screen, 827-3218. Now to the Kern River as a body was pulled near Miracle Hot Springs early yesterday morning. Deputies called to the area along the Kern River about 10 miles west of Isabella around 3.30 Monday morning. KCSO says they found a woman's body in the water and it appears she drowned. Investigators say there were no signs of any trauma. The victim's name has not been released. And now to one of our signature issues here at 17 News, Kern's sober reality. Two people died and three were hurt early Saturday morning after a two vehicle crash on Highway 155. Officers say alcohol or drugs may have been a factor. The CHP says the driver of a Dodge failed to stop at a stop sign and T-boned a Kia. The driver of the Dodge, a 17 year old Delano boy and his two passengers were taken to Kern Medical for treatment. But the driver and passenger in the Kia were pronounced dead at the scene. None of the victims have been identified. Now to your 17 follow up file. Two Catholic churches in East Bakersfield that have seen tens of thousands of dollars in property damage from vandalism might be getting their destroyed property replaced. 17's Marco Torres reports. Parishioners at the San Clemente Mission Parish continue to be upset about the destruction of their parish's property. I feel disappointed, a little, um, it's a little disgraceful. I just hope that whoever did it repents and owns up to it. We reported a week ago about a vandal who was caught on camera destroying the head of the San Clemente statue. You can see the suspect up close here. We've been coming to this church for, well, for all my life. For me, it's like a shock. I didn't know like uh, people who are like that around here. A devout parishioner has offered to fix the statue for the church. We do have a parishioner that is willing to help us at least put the head back on San Clemente. We are just waiting for the approval of the diocese. The diocese could also choose to replace the statue completely. This wasn't the only church vandalized. Their sister church, St. Joseph Catholic Church, just a mile away on Baker Street, was also vandalized. Last week, a rock was thrown through a stained glass window at the front of the church. The expenses are expected to be more than $10,000 to get it fixed. In total, there's fifty dollars to $70,000 in damages because of vandalism over the last two months between the San Jose and San Clemente Mission Parishes. Well, 17's Marco Torres reporting. Now, as for now, the decision to replace the statue from the Diocese of Fresno is expected by the end of the week. The diocese also looking into repairs for that stained glass window at St. Joseph's. Your time is 535. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, well, the 8th Annual Bakersfield Collector Con is coming back to Mechanics Bank. The event will include vendors, a cosplay contest, and several celebrity guests, including Leilani Shu, who plays a Jawa in The Mandalorian, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Bakersfield's Christian Ganier, who plays number 10 in the current season of Stranger Things. Ganier was born in Bakersfield and has been acting since he was just a baby. He says his big break in Stranger Things encouraged him to pursue his acting career. I knew I was going to do it for a while, but that told me that this is my chance to get to where I want to be, and I knew that if I didn't take advantage of the fact that I'm in the biggest show right now, that um, I wouldn't I wouldn't progress in my career and be what I want to be. So I knew that I had to stick to my craft and do what I want to do and give it my all. CollectorCon is from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and 11 to 5 Sunday. Admission is $9 Saturday, $5 on Sunday. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.